Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late July 2020, we're in the FA18C. We're going to take one of our DDIs, we're going to go main menu from tactical, we're going to go to support, we're going to look at four pages today. ADI, fuel, engine and checklist. Let's start at fuel. This shows the amount of fuel measured in pounds in all of our tank. Here we have a gross total with all of our tanks internal and external and it's dynamic you can see it measures the fuel flowing out of each tank. Next is net internals essentially total minus the exterior tanks. Here we have individual breakdowns forward tank 1, aft tank 4, left feed tank right feed tank my understanding is that the feed tanks are the pre-engine tanks next we have the fuel inside the actual wing we have 600 pounds in the left wing 600 pounds in the right wing we have left external tank right external tank and center external tank note how if i speed things up and put my afterburner on that all of the tanks drain at the same time i was unaware the hornet did this and so in this case it appears that we should be dumping all of our tanks together let me know if you have any other way of controlling that because it would be nice to be able to determine which tank we were going to drain from next is our selected bingo fuel which we can control from our AFI panel of course down in the bottom left in pounds currently just not set up to zero two features that are non-accessible at the moment do not work reset the stc does not work at the moment i believe that's like the central controller for the fuel and the FL built-in test not functional at the moment. And the only other feature to point out is the chevrons here. These chevrons are graphical representations of the level of the tank. So this tank here, if the chevron was at the top, it would be full. If it was halfway, it would be half empty. And if it was down on the bottom, then it's empty. It's just a quicker way of looking at it rather than the actual number itself. And purely for fun, why don't we go and drop those bags? Do it the old-fashioned way and you can see they've gone and the total is updating as necessary let's move on so back to tactical back to support and the adi attitude director indicator so what we've got here if we start up here is our airspeed as shown in the hard calibrated knots here is our altitude again as shown in the hard here is our vertical speed in feet per minute Next is a circle displaying our pitch ladder. If I unpause, we can see we're currently at a climb of zero. Now we're at a climb of 10 degrees. Now we're at a climb or pitch of 20 degrees and so on. Also a roll indicator. So if we were to roll, we can see that we've got zero, 30, 60, 90, and so on. The W, known as the waterline symbol, is also relevant if we have our ILS turned on. We will have our ILS glide slope and localizer lines displayed on here in yellow. The waterline can also be used for quick reference to check on our roll. Below the circle is a turn rate indicator in degrees per second. So let me level out. So if we were to neutralize our roll, we'll be in the middle here. This here would be a standard right turn of your rate 3 degrees per second and left turn 3 degrees per second. So let's just do a turn. And pause it. You can see that we're now left turn on a standard 3 degrees per second. And pause. All we've got to talk about now is the source. As standard, the input information for this ADI is standby. That's our standby attitude indicator. If we wanted to change from that because of a faulty indicator, then we can change to INS. So the information populating this is now from our inertial navigation system. If anyone knows why the default is standby attitude indicator, I'd like to know that. Back to support page. Next, engine. This very simply shows the credentials of our left and our right engine. So inlet temperature, currently minus 6 degrees Celsius at whatever crazy altitude I'm at. Next, N1 and N2 RPM, revolutions per minute of the first stage or low pressure compressor. And N2, the same but for the second stage or the high pressure compressor. So two front parts of the engine if you like. Next, EGT, exhaust gas temperature. Next is the fuel flow to each engine in pounds per hour. 
Next is the nozzle position, so our nozzle in percent. So a low reading like this is uh, closed, as you can see, and high reading, stand by, put the burner on, and you can see it increasing there. Next is the oil pressure for each engine. Next is the thrust. Next one's really interesting. Vibration of each engine measured in inches per second. If anyone knows about that sensor and how it works, I'd love to know. It seems like a mix between a potentiometer and a tachometer. Next is the fuel temperature, currently minus 12 degrees Celsius as it enters the engine. Next, EPR is engine pressure ratio. The ratio of the exhaust pressure to ambient inlet pressure next we get really complicated and way beyond my understanding but we've got cdp which is compressor discharge pressure in psia i'd love for someone to explain that next is tdp turbine discharge pressure in psia as well the only option we have is the ability to record or not record and non-functional at the moment okay so out of engine back to support and into checklist so in here we have a rudimentary checklist for landing, wheels, flaps, hook, anti-skid, harness and dispenser and for takeoff, controls, uh, wings, trim, flaps, hook, harness, warning lights, nozzle steering, low gain and seat arm. We have here a dynamically calculated, and I have no idea how it does this but it's really interesting, a dynamically calculated gross aircraft weight, so that's everything, fuel, stores, everything in the aircraft and that could be used to make sure that a you're not overweight for a landing so that we don't damage the wires or the hook or whatever b it allows us to calculate the amount of elevator or stabilator trim that we need for a takeoff and there's a table that you can refer to for that if just to see what your current stabilator deflection is we're currently at six degrees on the left and right nose up we can go between 24 degrees nose up 10 degrees nose down if i had to wiggle stabilator up and down you can see nose down nose up max nz is a really interesting one here maximum vertical g-force this is the maximum vertical acceleration experienced during the most recent landing rounded to the nearest 0.1 g if anyone knows why that's there i think that's really interesting but uh, let me know your thoughts so to summarize that is the adi the fuel page, the engine and the checklist page done. I hope that was useful and see you later.